Is that you? Did you do this? Why are you so bad? I think it looks okay. Corn should be done today. And that, my friends, is a beautiful thing. Uh oh. We're done harvest. What do you think of that? We got an SOS from Mark saying to come home because the puppy was uh, causing some turmoil in the house. Deep Brad, what did you get? We are strip tilling, not stripping. No poles involved. <laughs> from the black and white kitty. Good morning you guys. I know it's a little dark. We are starting Saturday morning a bit early. Uh, Adrian was talking to Mark yesterday. Him and his crew are coming at 8 this morning to spread my sheep manure. So it is right there on the pad. So Mark said, can you perhaps have chores done before eight so he's not in your way because it'll be right where I need to feed or bring in the bring in the feed. So yeah, we're just gonna start chores early. I'm a little concerned because I smell a skunk. And these three dogs, I don't really want them venturing to figure out where that smell came from. You know? So much like Ruby. Hi. Hello, tomatoes. How are you doing, Big Mama? Hmm. Merch. Popcorn. Hey. <laughs> Ruby Sue is doing really, really well over here. She just, she just fits right in. It's nice to see. Hey, you just filled your mama's spot. No problem. Just want to check in on our little buddy. See how he's doing today. Where's my boy? It's probably a good sign that I can't pick him out, right? There you are, he's looking at me. I think he looks okay. Hi, buddy. You feeling better? It is a good feeling when you see something at the right time. Quite often with a sick sheep or a sick lamb, you come like an hour too late or a couple hours too late or a day too late. And, and the trick with sheep is catching, catching them early. If you catch them early, you have a chance. I'm glad I texted Rex. This is why it's nice to have a vet you can work with. You can take pictures, you can take videos 
of sheep that are questionable or lambs that are questionable and just get a second set of eyes on them. It doesn't really take much out of their day just to say, yes, it looks like that, or yes, it could be that, or no, you're an idiot. <laughs> to just, you know, steer you in the right direction. It's definitely worth having a vet on your team, for sure. Well, chores took a little bit longer. I had to uh, take the dogs to the house while Adrian and the boys were here spreading manure. So thankfully I hadn't had another cup of coffee. So um, yeah, I warmed up, read some of my book and had some coffee while they spread their magic. So I'm just finishing up chores now. It's about 10.30. Mark is transferring corn because we're gonna try to get back here again right after lunch. I think Monty's gonna give us a hand. So I have a couple hours and I think what I might do is, these leaves are almost done shedding. I think for the year there's a, there's a few more holding on, but I think I might try to mulch these before they're covered in uh, the white stuff. I think we have made it to day 12 of corn harvest. I am just heading out now with a set of wagons. Monty is on buggy duty today. I think I talked about this already. Mark is already headed out with the combine. And my leaves are mulched. And the yard looks respectable. Better than it was. So if all goes according to plan, we should be done tomorrow. Uh, there's only 60 acres left, which we could probably do in a day, but I think Mark's like, no, we'll just get what we can get off today and then have a nice easy day tomorrow, like maybe 20 acres to get off tomorrow. It's supposed to be weather like this, which is sunny and clear. It's really, really nice to finish corn harvest or any harvest. Uh, when it's nice weather. It just feels way more celebratory than when it's just sort of garbage and you just want to get in the house just to escape it. It does sound like we complain when it comes to harvest and we just want to be done. It's not really that. It's not really the workload. It's the stress of what weather lurks around the corner this time of year. So um, yeah, I think, I think the snow is supposed to wait till we're nicely out of this field. Good morning guys, it is Sunday and sunny, which is glorious. We had a bit of a struggle last night. We thought we were done for the night. Jack and Jess were home. Uh, we haven't seen Jack in a while. He's been on another service call in Ohio and it's his birthday coming up this week. So I was like, oh, I hope we can at least see him for his birthday or before his birthday. So we were able to see him for a little while yesterday. We had a good visit. And then we organized, I think we're gonna try to see him Wednesday. Anyways, he had left, I was editing, Mark was sitting on the couch sort of babysitting his dryer from his phone and he got an alarm and he's like, oh, that's not a good alarm. The uh, cross auger blew those belts again. The auger was sort of sitting for a while and he said uh, yesterday morning when he turned it on, he said it slipped for a bit. And he said, as soon as you get like a shiny part on your belts, <clears throat> it's just a matter of time before they go. So he thought we had a full set of belts and when he put them on, they were way too big. And then I found a sort of a, a random set just outside the door. I said, will these work? He goes, well, they're one size smaller, but we needed one size even smaller than that, but we made it work. It got us through the night. The wet bin is empty. Mark's gonna transfer some corn while I do chores because Carissa took this weekend off. And if the stars are aligned and the universe says it's so, Corn should be done today. 
And that, my friends, is a beautiful thing. It's nice to finish off on a day like this. Well, this is it, you guys. At least, I hope it is. I, I never like to speak too soon, but this is day 13 of corn harvest, and it should be our last. I'm sort of sad and sort of glad. Jeez, what am I gonna do with my time? Got any room up there for me? Did you have good sleep? We're done corn. We're done harvest. What do you think of that? It's your first har- It's your first harvest! First harvest, Viper! What do you think of that? What are you doing, Viper Poos? What are you doing? Hi, monkey. Hi. She was just telling me how she finished her first harvest. How was your first harvest, Piper? How was your first harvest? It looks it's like exhausting. you were. Exhausting. <laughs> you were busy at work. Hello, Lucy. Are you going to help me unbox my celebratory post-harvest gift? Do you know what your dad called it? My new ride. Okay, guys. I got a delivery from the Amazon driver today. Yesterday, actually. But I didn't have time. And this was a necessity, not just a want. It's a little bit of both. I've been looking at these for a while. And my house is in desperate need of it because my vacuum cleaner of five years, maybe, because nothing lasts anymore, died uh, last weekend. So, oh, it did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. It totally died. Oh. So I got a cordless stick vacuum cleaner. I did not get the Dyson. This was like a quarter of the price. So I hope it's not a quarter of the quality. Your dad said he went on the reviews and they were all good. So. It's such a dad thing to do. It is a dad thing to do. Oh, instructions. Do to build it? Yeah. What? Sure do. That's silly. That looks like a future me problem. I'm too tired to tackle that tonight. But I'm very excited to clean my floors. Maybe tomorrow. Mark didn't even take a break after we were done harvesting. He is working in the manure, which is right beside our house, which is sort of nice of him. Good morning, it is Monday. Just finished my first cup of coffee, which was heavenly when I don't have to rush to go do something. Part of the reason I wanted to get harvest over and done with and off my mental to-do list was um, today Jess goes for a, another CT scan and this is the first one since her surgery and chemo and all the things. And if I'm perfectly honest, I've been stewing a little bit about it just because um, you feel like it should be over and it's like, it's just a reminder that it's really never over when, um, someone 
gets cancer or cancer diagnosis. I'm probably a little tired, but I'm, I'm just a little like on edge today. I gotta get her out the door at 7.15. Jess is not a morning girl, so I'm already prepared for a quiet ride to London. I think it's at 8.15, and then she asked if I would take her out for breakfast. So we're gonna do that. So yeah, today is a CT scan, and then we go over the results next Tuesday, the 28th. Is that Tuesday? Yes. Next Tuesday, we go for her results, so. Anyway, just keep us in your thoughts, as you always do. Oh, there's one other thing. My friend Laurel, I never told her that I was um, doing that unboxing in my last video, just about the stuff I was getting for gifts. And I, I, I actually did it because I wanted to get, I want to give you guys just gift ideas if, the, if it's something that you're interested in. Literally, these are her texts. Like, it's just a run-on text. She's a card and a half. The first one was, oh my God, Sandy. You're literally Oprah. Do you have any idea your influence? Oh my God, I just got five sales in one hour and I was so confused. Then Nikki, her friend that I talked about her candles, these candles, which I actually opened up last night. So pretty. Nikki messaged me and said her shop was blowing up. Just tried to put two and two together and saw you give us a shout out in your video today and oh my God, I haven't even watched it yet, but just saw the caption and like, do you realize how much of a heart of gold you have? Because this is insane and I wanna cry. I just love you and I don't deserve you and just genuinely thank you so much. Okay, watch the video and I'm crying. OMG, you guys, thank you so much. You're so good to me. And that's really what it's all about. She might as well have been writing this to you guys because you're the ones that have supported her, so thank you for that. That's great. So I might keep doing that just uh, as as I get holiday ideas or something that I can unbox. I think maybe I better have a second cup of coffee so I feel a little more alive and then do something with this hair. Did you tell me? It hurts. I hate that stuff. And I enjoyed this. I think I'm also going to give it a 3.5. I do feel like the debutante's duology which is what you're here we have to watch. It's probably my least favorite. Yeah. Um, I feel like the debutante's duology which is what you're here we have to watch. It's probably my least favorite. Take those lights out. Why? Cuz it's a live wire. No. I think just take that one strand out? Yeah. So that's it, it's not safe to be around it when it's a live wire like that. So we can't turn it on. Our doggy was not happy that we went She's away. She's so lucky those weren't plugged in. I know. It would have been like the Christmas vacation cat. It really would have been. <laughs> like Deep fried pussy cat. I gotta mulch these leaves again. Look at them all. Why? <laughs> Well, we are nicely back from London. We did not stay for too long because uh, we got an SOS from Mark saying to come home because the puppy was uh, causing some turmoil in the house and she was too cold to stay outside and Mark wanted to get some tillage done in a neighboring farm. So we uh, had to come home for our grandchild. Anyway, I am going to take a few minutes right now and mulch these leaves yet again. I think finally, We've lost most of our leaves, so I think I'm good. Well, another job off the list. I hope that is the last time. I don't think there's very many more leaves left on the trees, but I have mulched for the third or fourth time. I can't remember. If anyone was driving by, they'd just see me going around and around in circles. This is all I do. I just go over the leaves over and over again. I'm getting followed by a little doggy, so I have to uh, keep moving here but I'm just gonna go check in on Mark he is strip tilling uh, we were not able to get barely any tillage done this fall just because of the weather um, it just put us behind a bit so he's trying to get as much done as he can now that the corn is off that field done last night Adrian came and spread the manure on uh, Saturday morning so he just worked the manure in there and that is actually gonna be uh, our hay for next year. Yeah, that'll get planted in the spring. And I believe he is just in this field. Yep, there he is over there. I asked you guys if you wanted Mark to sort of talk about harvest when, it, when he was on the combine, and of course he was too busy to do that. So 
uh, I thought maybe now was a good time to kind of uh, do a debrief with you guys. We've never really done that. We just sort of always move on to the next battle. So I thought maybe I'd take a couple minutes with him and get him to uh, give his thoughts and feelings towards the uh, cropping season that was 2023. It's gone by sort of a blur for me because I was also sort of in a hospital all summer so I feel like I didn't really get a chance to see the crops grow like we usually do. We usually go on crop tours all the time and we just didn't do a lot of that this year so I'm gonna be sort of happy this year is done. Jess his tummy hurts. Yeah. Yeah from that stuff that she has to drink. Jess has to drink this disgusting like orange. She said a reminder of that orange antibiotics that she couldn't stomach when she yeah they thought she had an infection. Anyways uh, I am with Mark. We are strip tilling. Not stripping, strip tilling. No poles involved. <laughs> um, someone had a good question. They just thought instead of you, you know, trying to talk when you're busy with the combine to do a debrief when we're done. And we're done. So I think he asked if you're happy with the crop year. Like, did we exceed your expectations? Did we meet your expectations? Or were you disappointed with how the year went. I think in terms of the way the year went, um, based on the weather that we had, which was a little bit cooler than normal and cloudier than normal, and quite wet. And the wildfire, smoky. Yeah, smoky early when it was kind of dry. So we started out really dry and then we went honestly really wet. We did. Actually, all the crops were good. Um, surprisingly, wheat was good for how hot dry was for when it was going through its critical reproductive stages and then soybeans uh, did well as I was surprised because it was just kind of cloudy and cool same with corn so mm -hmm. we probably ended up with one of our second best soybean years our second best corn year and you know an above average wheat year so um, which is really nice because um, commodity it was my prices have dropped and this yeah. year was the most expensive crop I ever planted. Right. The input costs were so high, fertilizer, seed, chemical, everything had jumped in price. Um, it's nice to get good yields to kind of counterbalance that, especially with the softening in prices that we've seen over the last 12 months. So why are prices, why are the markets softening now? Well, I think the big thing was... It, I mean, they were, very, they they were quite high. Really high with the Ukrainian, Russia. Right conflict and then there's this fear that the world was going to run out of food right and then the world didn't run out of food so it's sort so of self-adjusting kind of like, okay well there could be conflict in the world and it's not going to impact food security so prices dropped and then brazil had a huge huge soybean crop oh, last okay. year and then they also had a really good safrina crop which means second crop Okay. Uh, of corn, so they had a good corn crop and good bean crop. The only thing that saved us there was that Argentina had like a record drought and the worst bean crop they've ever had in a lot of years. So it kind of took the state. even. It even even it didn't even South America because it's still like it's still higher. Huge. Okay. Yeah. Like, true. Brazil now is the number one soybean producer in the world, uh, bigger than the U.S. Really? Oh yeah. Just Brazil. Well, Brazil is huge. I know. So yeah, this the world is done well crop production wise. So there's there's a comfort level in supply. So because of that, uh, prices have dropped. The market softened. Yeah. So we needed good yields to help offset um, that, especially with the cost of the crop to go in the ground. Right. Um, the second question someone had is. How do you keep track? For example, I told them when we were doing Ted's field, it's like our wettest field. You grew a pretty short day variety because you knew it would be the hardest one to get off if the weather turned. Yes. So someone said like, how do you keep track? A lot of, he keeps track in his brain. <laughs> the squirrel cage. Yeah. How do you organize that as you go from year to year? Well, so the fields are, the fields you just learn what they can do and what they can't do. So that's kind of like the farms we work with is kind of just experience. So that's the one part of it. We know that if it's a wet farm, we tend to do things differently versus if it's a well-drained farm. So I've got a spreadsheet that has all our fields in it. 
and then I, I keep a crop rotation in that spreadsheet so I can go back and look at what crops I grew on that farm over time and also the different varieties or hybrids I grew there uh, I keep track of as well. Um, so basically we try to do a corn, soybean, wheat rotation some of these winter farms because we can't do a winter crop on because it'll over like our kill. canola or yeah like yeah. they'll kill over the winter because of the lack of drainage yeah so they tend to be corn soybean rotation so i kind of look at it try to balance out our acres i use spreadsheets and then i have software programs that also help me do that like management programs right. so um i spend a lot of time on a computer Time. Yeah, Doing, that's uh, when everybody thinks you're on holidays yeah. and not helping me. I'm he's shipping, like, I'm shipping grain that we yeah. just like all the stuff that Sandy hauled into our, our grain system. I have to ship out over the winter time and market. Yeah, so, uh, so I'm doing marketing, uh, yeah. you know, shipping, uh, crop plans, and then I do a lot of education. I I go to meetings. I try to do a lot of online, online stuff. Online stuff. I try yeah. to learn more about cropping systems. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it was a good year. It was a good year. It's good to be I'm done. I'm really glad it's done. I told them I don't even usually I get to see the crop grow with you because we go on crop tours and we're too busy yeah, with Jess. Yeah, we haven't done that. We didn't we're, do that this year. Because our nights were occupied. Parenting. Parenting. Yeah, which needed to be done yes. as well. Good morning. We've had uh, a little bit of an adventure first thing this morning. Well, I didn't. Carissa did. I texted her just saying that Mark and I had a meeting first thing this morning. I said, so if you need me, just text me. She goes, no, I need you. PETA and three of her buddies somehow got our gate open and visited the uh, playpen next door. I'm not really sure how they did it because I had a chain and a clip and the clip was brand new, but they broke the clip. Not only did they do that, I will show you what they did. Is that you? Did you do this? Um, they also broke my T-post right off. So it's corroded for sure. Like this is all rust. But this is like now not attached. I'm gonna have to ask Mark what we're gonna do here. I don't know how we're gonna fasten another one in between these two water bowls. There's just not enough room, I don't think. So whether I put chains, sort of, at least putting these two gates together to just hold everything tight, I don't know. Really? Thankfully, Krista said there was a lot of running, but there was no jumping that she saw. Even looking at PETA's back end, there's no ruffled wool. So I'm hoping we got lucky. The only saving grace is they are close to being the right age, especially Peta and Teddy. Teddy didn't go in there. B, um, they, they would be lambing in with this group. That's sort of a relief. I'm gonna try zip ties for now. I have some pretty big heavy duty ones here. I do have clips, but I don't have any chains. So until I can get some chain, uh, I just wanna make sure Nothing more happens. We might actually head to London today to take Jack out for his birthday. And maybe while we're there, um, I might see if we can go somewhere and find some more chain. Why are you so bad? All right, well, it's temporary, but hopefully that will just get us through. I moved out with the dog, because look at the window. Birthday boy. Grandpa's cards on the top. Yeah. 
Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I got it. I got it. See ya.